Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from my channel Hybrican Model Railway. Now today it's time for a bit of an unboxing, review and test of the Parkside Cordless Rotary Tool. So I've been looking at getting a rotary tool for a couple of months now and it was only recently when I realised that Lidl did one or the sort of generic name Lidl uses for its power tools is Parkside. When I realised that Lidl had one coming into stock I thought you know what that's uh, you know a good a good time to get one because it's only £17 and my parents very kindly decided to buy it for me as a little bit of a present. Not that it's my birthday but just a nice thing that they did. So I've originally been thinking about getting a rotary tool as I said, for a couple of months, specifically uh, when I got lended some of these cast stone walls, um, resin, sort of like pot type feeling walls. I realised that I'm not going to be, be able to cut them with snips. I don't really want to be doing all my walling by hand. Um, I also realised that when I was getting chassis such as these to clean up and repair, I couldn't just stick sandpaper on them because I have done that for triangle wheels before. But it just took too far too long and it was just too much of a pain to do. And uh, especially when I was trying to get this 040 back up and running, which the video will hopefully be coming shortly on this when I get the parts, I was realised that the wheels were just far too stubborn and the coupling rods were getting rusty and it was just too much of a pain. So I decided to get myself a rotary tool. I had looked around for a mains powered one and you know Dremel's too expensive 40 50 quid far too many accessories that I'm not going to use there were Shepak ones and I think Draper ones in tool station and screw fix but they were mains powered ones and you know I've got two plugs for the lights four for the controllers one for my phone charger one for my soldering iron one for the lamp I didn't want to be using any more plugs or add, having to add any more plugs than I already got and plus something about using a mains powered um, tool in a confined loft environment just didn't sit right with me so I really was going for a cordless one and that's where the little one came in so basic features of this tool I think as you can see we won't be able to see on the label but it's a 1300 milliamp hour battery uh, there's three lithium ion cells in here uh, which is quite good it doesn't come with a charge as you can see I've put a Samsung one in uh, but it does come with a one and a half meter USB-C lead so that's very good as well I will say that with a decent power supply this one can do two amps at five volts this tool charged in about two two and a half hours which really isn't too bad and a 1300 milliamp hour battery should be absolutely fine for the light due to use so it's going to get from me spindle lock so push well unfortunately it's already in the position where you can put it down but push it down turn it and that locks the spindle in place so you can unscrew it to get your tools in and out it's a six speed so we've got one two three four five six oh no seven speed actually i forgot it had six i thought it was only one to five and then max so uh, seven speed simple on off switch on the bottom which i really like you know if you're jamming it against your body and trying to get the spanner on here that doesn't mean that you know you're actually going to accidentally push the button and chop your hand off uh, but it's not continuously variable as you can hear it does increase in clicks Especially if I put it next to the microphone, you can hear that it is a PWM drive, so it's not just literally a variable resistor. Hopefully you can hear that slight electronic whir. Uh, really not too loud, actually. There's a nice step up between the speeds. And then that speed, as you can hear, it's like you've gone into the thing on Star Wars where they go shooting past and all the streaks of light but other than that speeds are really quite nice battery level indicator there as you saw I am doing all these tests fully charged so that's quite good nothing really much to say else on that at all so we shall put it back in and take a look at some of the accessories so bits that come with it instructions tool obviously one collet in there four collets there spanner and a couple of bits which we'll go through in more detail here we have some sort of aluminium oxide abrasive cutting wheels. Obviously you don't use toothed cutting bits on a small tool like this. We've got like 20 I think aluminium oxide ones and I've already fitted one to a mandrel. It didn't come like this in the felt pad I also fitted yesterday while fiddling around. So aluminium oxide discs um, and we've got some coarser greeny blue discs and some finer red 
grinding discs as well. Three felt pads, two there, one there. We've got different size collets. So basically, a collet, as far as I understand it, or as far as I learned how it was, is basically a bit like a drill chuck, but the jaws are sort of removable. So you have a small piece of metal with a taper, as you can see there, it goes wide, thick, then thin and then goes down there and effectively it's a piece of metal with sort of four springy jaws so instead of having drill chucks which sort of just come in and grip or go out and widen like that the collet is basically just a chuck with springy jaws so when this is in the tool and you put the nut over it the nut squeezes on these pieces of metal and as you can see they've got slits in them and they are free to move in and out you can't push them with your fingers well you can there slightly actually you can probably just see that but with the nut you screw the nut over this and then the nut squeezes in on the bits of metal and then clamps that bit in place. The things that come with this tool then include some router bits down here. I will test these on a little bit of wood. Basically just little spiral cutters. Yep, you can see that. And then we've got some engraving bits down here. I'm not really going to do that much engraving, but sort of like ridged engraving bits. We've got a brush, pretty useless really, because you've already got this black one over here. And then some grinding wheels, uh, some small drill bits, which is quite good because the uh, drill bits often snap, so it's nice that they're giving you ones for them. Shame it didn't actually come with a drilling chuck for the drill bits, but the collets will do absolutely fine. Uh, you've got the wire wool brush, which I will be using most of the time. I need to order some of these off eBay. I think you can get a pack of 20. Um, for about four quid so i do need to order some of these because i will be using these most often felt pads and the cutting discs i've already fitted one this is what a mandrel is it's basically just a shaft with a screw and two washers that allow you to unscrew it and then you can put the cutting disc on so then We've gone through all the parts, we've done a little bit of an unboxing, I've taken through you all the bits. So now I think it's actually time to see if this tool lives up to its price of £17, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's a great value for money, I think. So yeah, we'll give this tool a little bit of a test on some bits and bobs I've prepared earlier. And we'll see if it's worth its £17 price tag. I'm sure it will be. The tool also does kind of happily stand up, although if the work surface shakes a bit, you know, it's not exactly a sturdy thing, it's not got a perfectly flat bottom, it does sort of wobble a bit, and it's not just this surface as well, I've tested it on the kitchen worktop downstairs, that's perfectly flat and it does wobble, but, you know, wherever you leave it, it is sort of going to roughly stay there you know even if you put it sort of upside down like that but yeah good weighty tool feels nice and heavy um i haven't weighed it but you know you know when you pick up a thing and think oh yeah that's quite heavy that's quite weighty plenty of grip spots all over and it's comfortable whatever position you want to hold it even right down at the bit like that and using it as sort of a very very heavy pencil but we shall give it a test. I do have, we'll start, we'll give it the chance actually, and we will do some wire wheeling on this old Triang chassis, and we'll see how it goes. Right then, just before we start, I will say that for the health and safety concerned people who are watching, but uh, if you are concerned from a health and safety, then thank you very much. Um, but obviously that's my priority to think about, you know, you don't shouldn't really have to worry about it. But I will just say that because of the angle I'm sat of the bench, if I'm wire wheeling like this, which I will be here. Uh, the likely of a brush, you know, coming out and hitting me isn't very likely. I do wear glasses. There you go. Um, and especially at the angle I'm sitting, especially with the protection, no glasses aren't a replacement for safety goggles, but at the position I'm sitting, it's not really likely if a brush comes off to hit me in the face. I am wearing quite a thick hoodie, and obviously my legs are under the workbench, so there's no chance that they're going to get penetrated. However, I will say that when using... And, um, yeah, that's why you should be careful, because just slightly bending it, pulling it out of the pack, it has snapped. So do be very careful with these when cutting. Try and go for the thinnest one possible, because although they will snap the easiest, uh, they will remove less material, so that when you are cutting, you know, if you do force it, it won't bog down as much. So, yeah, that has just broken with literally me just pulling it up by that. I should have pulled it by the shaft, but I didn't. So kind of good that that's broke, just to show you how easy they are to break. But when I am using cutting wheels, I will use a proper pair of goggles because obviously they can smash glasses and they can go anywhere. And if it hits me anywhere around the face area, a wire brush might not hurt, but a whole, you know, half disc of cutting wheel might. And I will be using this later, so if it does explode, we'll be able to see how exciting that is. But not using safety goggles for just wire wheeling and drilling and stuff like that. But when I do something serious like using the cutting discs, then I will use 
eye protection. But anyway, let's click this on, we'll get it up to speed, and we'll see how the wire wheeling goes. Think a bit higher, stick it on five. And that has done brilliantly. Hopefully, you can see there, that this wheel here is the one I've polished, and you can see, hopefully you can see how shiny that wheel there is compared to the other wheels. So before with one wheel done and we'll see how it looks after. Okay then, so that went very well, no problems at all. Not that many wires shedded off the end of the brush actually, there's barely any. Just a couple sticking out but uh, there were some like that when we started. So as you can see, all these wheels lovely and shiny again, refracting the light like a mirror. Yep, yeah, absolutely wonderful job that did. I did test over here slightly and it does actually remove the paint, so if you do slip it on, a, on an old loco, don't worry too much because you're probably not likely to get that much off. But it can sort of remove the paint. Even got the sort of weird gunk, gluey stuff off here, which I'm very happy about. And uh, these wheels are feeling lovely and shiny and lovely and smooth once again. So, let's give it something a bit harder and try some very badly corroded wheels. So let's give it a little bit of a blast on the worst wheel and see what we end up with. No problem there at all, as you can see, lovely and shiny. Right, let's give it a go with the cutting disc and see what this tool can really do. Safety glasses, or safety goggles on, because I'd like to keep my retinas. There you can actually see I've left them on, I've not just taken them off out of shot. So I will get them on. Slightly nervous, but I suppose I'm well within my right to be with it being a, a tool like this. But uh, let's try cutting this little plasticky piece of wall and we shall see how it goes. That's what I mean by they're easy to break. Barely any pressure there, just came straight off. Nevertheless, we can see that it did make quite good progress on this little bit of plastic wall. Another bit of hardened, well, another bit of wall, a little bit more harder this time. New cutting disc. We won't go all the way through because I do want to get on to some of the routing bits. But let's see how this goes. I'll remember to wind the speed down on and then turn it up. Okay, so we did end up going all the way through because I thought, well, what the hell. But you can see that that made a pretty clean job. We'll need a bit of sanding, but that's made a good job of cutting a little piece off the end of that wall. Right, let's really make it choke this time. Okay then, bit of Lima steel track. I've removed some of the sleepers so I can get better access. I'm expecting it to just explode, but uh, let's see how this goes. Oh, interesting, the tool has act actually, that's hot is that piece of steel, George, you've just been cutting. The tool did actually cut out there, so we have learnt that it does have a thermal cutout. Will it start up again? Yes. I wasn't pushing it particularly hard there either. I was on speed five and I was just literally holding the tool on and letting the weight of the tool do the work. So, uh, yeah, not loads of power, but I'd never, ever be cutting, you know, steel with that tool. I'd, I'd actually use a proper saw there. But, uh, yeah, not, not too bad. It definitely made progress. Don't know if you can see. 
but it did make a pretty decent gouge out of the side of it. In fact, it was nearly all the way through. So, yep, it's done all right on steel track. I won't test it out with the nickel silver because I don't want to uh, overheat it too much the first time I've used it. But now, quick, have a look at the milling attachments and we'll see how it goes. But, yep, this didn't explode this time and it seems to uh, barely have reduced in size as well. So, yeah, does have thermal cutout, does this tool. It does solve itself by just turning it off and back on again but yep does manage fairly thick steel track let's give it a go on some wood i have the little spiral router bit installed i won't be doing much routing so i don't want to make a load of wood dust but we'll just do a few basic tests so first of all set the speed to mid speed we'll see if it can do a plunge cut straight into this chipboard we won't do plywood too messy and it burns so let's have a go Here were some of the lines along the edge of the boards. Plunge cuts around here were totally fine. That was the line it did across. It did sort of bog down a little bit there. Slightly disappointed um, with how it does quite, you know, kind of bog down. And uh, there was the attempts from the edge of the board. Not very good because it is quite dense on the end, um, but not so good on top. So, yeah, didn't do too badly there, but it's not absolutely amazing. And in conclusion, do I think that this is worth the £17 price tag, given how you get the tool and all the accessories and the charging lead, but not the actual charger as well? Well, yes, I do think this is a absolutely brilliant tool. As you can see, for my uses where it concerned, where cleaning wheels like this does absolutely sterling job very corroded wheels on this one here absolutely platinum job and um, could see in walls i admit i probably did have the speed on a little bit too high for this one that's why it has got some melting of the plastic there uh, but it did successfully uh, make it through the steel it has just got a tiny 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 little bit but you know i could snap that there look i have done it has literally cut and through the steel so there is absolutely nothing wrong with that and of course it did manage the uh the wall as well which is very good so yes absolutely i would recommend it the only thing i would say is buy if you're going to be doing a lot of cutting buy some more cutting discs because these are very weak i have got some black and decker ones um but i don't want to ruin them uh, the routing bits not very good they're not very sharp um and they just don't make that much progress if you're going to be doing routing um, in a piece of work if you are only going to be doing small amounts um, then I would suggest getting a little bit of a more powerful tool than this I'd perhaps get a Dremel battery powered one or a Dremel mains powered one uh, but they're all right you know if I have to put a tiny notch in for a light or something it'll be all right for that grinding wheels I haven't really used uh, but for polishing and you know getting rid of rust and a tiny little bit of woodworking this tool is absolutely fine so yes it is indeed worth its £17 price tag I do absolutely love this tool after only using it for about half an hour but uh, i am so far really enjoying using it so that shuts the lid on the parkside rotary tool and it closes the lid for my review on it thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you again soon bye for now